councillors for your attendance. Uh, do we have any declarations of conflict of interest? Are we dealing them through the meeting? Any declarations of conflict of interest? Yeah. Okay. Councillor Edwards? We, we do it as we go. Oh. Yeah. Just first on uh, the um, attendances. Um, <coughs> right, okay. So then we'll, if there's nothing else, we'll move on. Um, does anyone would like to move on the minutes? Just in terms of the um, on the table. There would have been a, a number of items from the special meeting last week. I think that's actually been put into the closed section. Is that correct? Um, I felt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There will likely be additional ones added during the course of the meeting. Perhaps we um, just make reference to. Um, the special meeting on 19, 19. May. the inclusion of an update from the session special meeting. Minutes seem to have dropped off here too, have they? Off the agenda. We had an email that was sent. No, no, just no, yeah. Yeah. the table of contents. Yeah. Probably worth noting, yeah, if Councillor O'Neill wanted to be provided um, during the meeting and added to the confidential agenda. You want me to move that? Yeah. I'll move that an update on the special meeting held on the 19th of May 2021 be provided during the meeting and added to the confidential agenda. We have a seconder. Councillor Taylor, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Okay, so there's nothing else. We'll move on to item 11.1, .1, births, deaths and marriage notices. The minutes, we'll have to do the minutes. Oh, the minutes, that's right. Uh, <coughs> do we have anyone to move on the minutes from the last general meeting? Do we have any uh, dates for that? The ordinary... It's 12th of May. 12th of May. Do we have anyone to move on those minutes? Um, Councillor Edwards? I'll move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on 12th of May 2021 be confirmed. OK, do we have a seconder? <coughs> Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. OK, does anyone... Um, would like to move on the minutes of the special meeting of the 19th of May. Councillor Hancock. I move that the minutes of the special meeting held on 19th May 2021 scheduled to commence at 9.30am be confirmed. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Okay. Um, and then we'll move on with the agenda. There's another set. Oh, we've got another set. Oh, I haven't looked. Oh, that's Sorry, right. Still just uh, okay. Do we have anyone that uh, would like to move on the minutes? So how do we differentiate those two? The time. One's nine thirty oh. and one's twelve ten. Oh, yeah. Okay. On the 
Yeah, the meeting okay. is 12.01, oh, 12.10 p.m. Do we have a mover, Councillor Burkett? I uh, move that the minutes of the special meeting held on the 19th of May 2021 be scheduled to commence at 12.10 p.m. be confirmed. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Taylor, any opposition? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Okay, no more minutes. Right, -o. we'll move on to the agenda. 11.1, .1, births, deaths and marriage notices. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the Council one. I'll move that, that one, Council undertake a six month <laughs> trial with option, op, both option one, voluntary bulletin, and option two, four ZR radio advertising commencing in August 2021. Uh, two, Council communicate with the community via a media release about the options available to communicate their birth, death and marriage notices. And three, rep a report be brought back to Council with the results at the conclusion of the trial. But I'd like to move that this lay on the table um, to a future meeting till we get all of the local um, radio stations that broadcast here to put uh, offers in, which is not in the report, and then that come back with all of that information, including the briefing that we had um, as well. Uh, all of that information come back be to a future meeting for a decision. Does anyone? I just have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, I thought when we were doing the agendas now, we were going to have a bit of a discussion before a motion was moved. Were we not going to sort of? Well, you certainly can ask any questions. Hmm. Um, if you would like to, or would you like to say anything before we... Well, I just, the bottle tree bulletin, like, it's a monthly thing. So is that any benefit for, for death, funeral? And it's, it, it's, it's not, it won't be for funeral notices, clearly. Um, um, but it, it would be for death notices. Uh, just to yeah, let okay. people know. Just to let people know. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, I got it. Thank you. Councillor McDonald. Mr Mayor, I'd also like to... Add, I suppose, I'm not going to add now, but we're not going to do any more with it, but um, we sh shouldn't we be including the paper that we receive on a weekly basis here, the Treated the South West Times, as, as people are taking their time to run a business, run a paper and, and supply the, not just run, in the district with a paper, we should be supporting it. Well, I'm happy to put that in the motion to lay it on the table and to, to get um, actually information about a... Uh, <laughs> what the, bo the, the body of the report is trying to do to get from every um, radio and or paper organisation that distributes in the Maranoa. I suppose um, if you're allowing a conversation around this to, to um, Councillor McMullen, um, I suppose the reason why we're at this point is to, to date they haven't, they haven't done that and it'd be great if they did, but the individual... Um, can take out, from my understanding, um, uh, uh, advertisements, not the right, a, a notice, pay for a notice in the paper um, themselves. Um, but that just hasn't been happening to date and, and hence the reason why it's been raised by uh, members of our community to, for, for council to consider what options there may be for us to play a role. Yeah, and, and what I've asked to lay on the table is all those options come back, including with the South West that any death notices that are put in that it could be charged to council if council decided to sponsor that. So there'd be no cost to putting in a death notice in. So the, all these things could come back to council to make it a free service for people to do that, mm. to encourage them to go to that next step in a time of loss. Councillor Hancock. Uh, just noting on page nine of the, of the um, <coughs> report, there is the rates um, of the council could choose, like it is in the report, and I guess that's why it's there, is to give us the choice whether we wanted to pay for a half page or a quarter page um, for that. So I guess, yeah, that's the price <coughs> already in here. Any other comments? But if we still had the Western Star, people would be paying for it themselves. That would be, yeah. yeah. That's right. But there's other radio station issues with that too, I think. Yeah. So, you know, obviously council have all the information before they make a decision. Okay, we'll put it to the vote to lay it on the table to get all the information. All those in favour? 9 0. Oh,
11.2 recommendation to purchase 13 single cab 4x4 utes. Or any questions? Councillor Taylor. Uh, three minutes, please. I do note in it that this has already been in the budget, has been approved in the previous budget, so it's just a matter of you're ready to spend the money, is that correct? Yeah, this is the carryover from last one, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's already been approved to spend it, basically, because it's been in the budget. That's correct, yeah. thank you. Yeah, just one other question that I have that um, people are asking me. Um, on page 19, where it's got all the, the inf information on it, the... HID replaced with LED. Is that spotlights? <coughs> driving lights. As in spotlights, yeah. though? Yeah, Added on. Spotlights and driving lights. Okay. Spotlights are used generally on the roofs of vehicles for roof shooters. These are driving lights on the front of vehicles. On the front, yeah. yeah. Is there any reason why they need them if they don't drive at night time? We can't guarantee those vehicles won't be out at night time. All of them? You can't guarantee them? No. I, honestly, I couldn't. No. Okay. That would be up to the departments. Uh, Look, if you've got uh, guys starting out at job sites at six in the morning in the middle of winter, it's quite dark. Mm. And these are all four-wheel drive vehicles. They're not vehicles that we generally would have in towns. Or they'll be with maintenance crews. Yeah, I just didn't think they took their vehicles home. Like, no, I they just... don't take the vehicles home. No, no. Not these ones, unless they're on call. Yeah. Well, there would be a difference between the ones on call and the ones that aren't on call? See who's going to be on call either, council. And like we, I previously mentioned to council, we're trying to get to a point where we standardise the vehicles so we can actually uh, move them around in the fleet to balance out the kilometres and make the most, take the biggest advantage of our warranties. Mm. And, and sorry, Ms. May, just one more thing. Um, I also noticed that the um, the time frame, <coughs> like one lot is 17 weeks and one's four to six weeks. So going on the recommendation, you're not in a hurry. Not particularly. Uh, we've actually spoken to the dealer that they've quoted 17 weeks. Uh, like a lot of the other suppliers, they'll say factory times, but generally it's a lot quicker than that. Uh, we've actually spoken to the fleet manager for, for the, uh, uh, the uh, recommended supplier, and they believe that vehicles will start to roll in here within six weeks. Okay, thank you. But they didn't want to guarantee that in their quotation. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Does anyone wish to move on this? Councillor Burkett. I move to Council 1, select Black Auto Group as the recommended supplier for 13 4x4 four four single cab utility vehicles at a cost of $659,276.80, including GST, excluding registration and CTP insurance. And two, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter in final negotiations with Black Auto Group of Roma and raise purchase orders if the final terms are acceptable. Uh, do we have a seconder? Mm -hmm. Hancock. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Will we go to the vote? All those in favour? Nine zero. Eleven point three recommendation to procure one five metre uh, square metre bucket loader wheel loader. <coughs> do we have any questions, or do we have a mover? Or is there anything that you wanted to say about uh, this? this uh, suggestion to purchase? <coughs> uh, no, I think the report details of everything, Mr right. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, do we have a mover? <coughs> Council McMullen. <Mr>. Mayor, <coughs> I'll move that Council 1 select Hitachi Construction Machinery as the recommended supplier for one five cubic metre wheel loader and accessories at a cost of $542,685, including GST, including extended warranty, excluding registration and CTP insurance, and to authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter into final negotiations with Hitachi Construction Machinery 
and raise a purchase order in the final terms, if the final terms are acceptable. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Guthrie. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Item 13.1, Maranoa Arts Gateway. Do we have a mover? Councillor Hancock. I move that council note the correspondence received from the Maranoa Arts Gateway Inc. Committee. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Thirteen point two RFT two one zero two nine sale of six Burroughs Street Surat. Do we have a mover? Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council one accept the offer from Allwood Building Services Propriety Limited for thirty thousand dollars input tax uh, for the purchase of six Burroughs Street Surat being lot five zero two on S two eight two and to authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter into negotiations with Allwood Building Services Proprietary Limited, formalising the terms and conditions in the draft contract and execute any documentation associated with this asset disposal. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Hancock, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Point three, renewal of lease 18 to 20 Station Street, Roma. Councillor Edwards. Conflict, please. Ed. So declaration of interest is item 13.3. Description is renewal of lease 18 to 20 Station Street, Roma. Uh, declaring council is Councillor Mark Edwards. Uh, date is 26th of May 2021. Uh, the matter, um, person of interest is myself. <coughs> Relationship category would be self. Um, particulars of the interest, the interest is as follows. Uh, I have a contract with council which is a lease of council assets, including any discussions leading up to the... Oh, sorry. Um, the interest is as follows. I have a contract with council, uh, which is a lease of council assets, including any discussions uh, leading up to the contract for the tender. Uh, contract or tender. Um, full stop. I was a past treasurer of Rome Historical Precincts, uh, Inc. Full stop. Uh, that's uh, full stop after ink. And my name appears <coughs> as a signatory. Uh, on the previous signed lease. Uh, for completeness, I'm not a member of the Roma Historical Precincts, Inc. Nor am I on the executive. Uh, the type of conflict... Uh, so a member of... Precincts. Uh, sorry. Um, <coughs> for completeness, I am not a member of Roma Historical Precincts, Inc., nor am I on the executive. Inc., nor am I on the executive. Uh, type of conflict is prescribed conflict of interest, uh, and the action is um, I will leave the room while the matter is, matter is discussed and voted on.
just on that one, Councillor Edwards, are you saying that you have no, you're not on the committee, you're not a member, but your name was on the old lease that's now expired? Mm -hmm. Well, it hasn't it? expired quite yet. We, it's still still there, as far as I know. So basically, it's a current document which I'm a signatory to, which is a contract. Mm. Which is a lease. Mr. Mayor, can I just, I want to ask, advise the CEO something without being in public, but it's sure. pretty important. We'll just adjourn for a minute. Uh, I've got a question for Councillor Edwards. <coughs> Do you have the contract, or d doesn't Roma Historical Precincts have the contract? Yeah, but I'm, I'm a signatory to it. Yeah, so it's probably more that you're a signatory to the contract or you were. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, Mr Mayor, we can only ask questions if the councillor um, opts for to stay in the room and we decide. Oh, right. He's, he's yeah. oh, um, opted decide to leave answer. the room. Yeah. So therefore it's, it's out of our hands. I'm just trying to understand what the conflict would be. The... Um, Okay, so I'll declare a conflict of interest on that basis that uh, I might use that same wording. And uh, particulars of the interest is that I was president of Rome Historical Precincts Incorporated at the time of this lease. My, my involvement has been historical at that time. No longer a member. Of Rome Historical Precincts Incorporated. And uh, or on or on the executive, I should say that. I'll be declaring a declarable conflict of interest out of the abundance of caution. Section, th uh, section uh, four is I wish to participate in discussions and decision making, but I realise that councillors uh, will have to make that decision and I will abide by any decision of council. Okay, is there any other conflicts, councillors? I have to deal with yours first. Right. Yeah. I just can we just read that again? Sure. <coughs> oh, I'm just I'll just wait for it to go up on the screen. Does anyone uh, uh, wish to vote on that? Councillor Taylor. Um, um, I, that it is in the public interest that 
uh, Mayor Golder participates and, vote, and votes on agenda item 13.3 because a reasonable person would trust that the final decision was made in the public interest. Motion to have a seconder, Councillor Burkett. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 8 0. Okay, any other conflicts, councillors? Okay, thank you, Councillor Edwards. If you, I've just got a question more broadly. If sure. I can. In in light of um, you know, Councillor Edwards declaring, but this isn't relating necessarily specifically to Councillor Edwards. What do we have in place for leases with community groups when the executive change? Look, in this instance, one of the signatories that I can see is obviously still because they they're still the secretary, which is fine. But if both of those people had st stood down, they're no longer the legal rep representat representatives of the entity in which we've got a lease. So have we got triggers in place, tenure to, or is something embedded in the leases to notify council in the event the signatories change? Or what, what are we doing in those regards? Um, through you, Mr Mayor, the, um, the lease is with the organisation, um, not with the actual signatories. The mm -hmm. signatories are just signing because and yeah. they hold those positions. At that time. At so that even that if they time, don't yeah. hold it at a later date. No, so okay. the, the lease is actually with the entity. Yeah. It's on behalf of the signatures on behalf of them. So Mark, if you didn't really need to leave the room, you don't think? Is that what you're but his name's on the piece of paper that's in the document that's been presented to us. Hmm. Whereas the mayor's Whereas not. the mayor's doesn't have a name on anything in the documentation we've received. Hmm. Okay, I think we had a mover and a seconder, didn't we? No, we no, haven't. No. No. Okay, do we have a mover? I will, Councillor McMullen. <coughs> Mr Mayor, I'll move that Council pursuant to Section 236.1c3 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, approve Roma Historical Precinct Inc. renewal of lease agreement over land described as Lot 1 on R8650 and lot two on R8688 for a 10, 10 year period commencing 15th of November 2021 with the option of a further three by, three by five year periods and authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to sign the lease agreement. We have a seconder, Councillor Burkett. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We're gonna go to the vote, all those in favour. Eight zero. Okay, item 13.4, RF21030, Injun Caravan Park Management Agreement. I've got a um, question. With this one, I couldn't see anything there where they sort of said how much they were going to charge or any of those things, or are they just collecting on behalf of us? Um, with that. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, um, Mr Mayor, um, they will be charging as per the current fees. They need to um, advise council, ask council if they wish to change those fees. <coughs> um, in, the, yeah, in the agreement, they will retain, um, retain all fees, the same as what we do with and spa, all the swimming pools. So the question is, you know, there was some complaints in the past about when, you know, people were getting up at 4am and 5am and going to work and that. Mm. Do we have anything in that to safeguard that that is uh, uh, not going to happen and, and can look after people coming through town? Because they were saying that they wouldn't, they wouldn't stay there if they... 
Mm. And ZEEP is going off on all the yeah. places. So with this tender, we've really focused it and the management agreement on being a, a caravan park for tourists. Um, and as part of it, we've required people to submit a business plan outlining how they intend to run the business and, and what their plans for the business are. Right, okay. So you're confident it, it sort of will be focused more on that tourism side of things? Yeah. And the recommended um, tenderer there, they've got a lot of experience in managing other tourism parks. Um, it's um, there in the, in the document. It's on page 112. So they actually manage parks, um, Bells, Torbal, the Moreton Bay Regional Council, Bow Desert, Marine Park and some at Noosa as well. So there's quite a few there that they, they do look after, which are tourism parks. The other question is, are we locked into the three with an option of an additional three? Or could council, you know, have a lower level of time and see how it goes? Will the community's happy? Um, with, with, the, with the business plan, um, they've submitted a business plan explaining how they... Um, intend to run the park and I guess the goal being that they want to make it into a, a, a profit making entity or something that can stand on its own two feet and not require subsidisation from council longer term. So the business plans are based on the, the three years plus three years. Um, I mean, three years does go quite fast in business, I mean, and it will be up to council to agree to the option of the further three. Oh, so it's not a, it's not no. a definite... No, like it's council, going to both they parties, will get the three parties. years, but they will have certain um, – the, the, in the major agreement, they have to run the park in a certain way. Um, and then council's got um, options there that if council says, look, you're not running it how we wanted you to run it. So council does have some triggers there that council could have some, you know, conversations with them. Um, and then the additional three is an option, so that would come back to council. So council would have that option then whether or not they wanted to agree to the additional three years. So if it wasn't getting the community benefits that mm. you would hope it would get, yes. the council has that decision making yes. power in three mm. years. And yes. I think the six there too, Mr Mayor, was like on page 12 there that that company talked about, they said they see that they'll need that sort of three to six years uh, business plan uh, basically to try and cover their costs as well too. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got no problem with that. My, my main thing is just if the community's not happy and they're not getting mm. the benefits as well, yeah. just pull this all apart. Yeah, definitely. Deal with it. Councillor Taylor. Oh, actually, I think I've answered my own question, sorry. The um, tender pays council, is that $10,000 uh, a year? That's a year, yeah. It's I just say that there now, sorry. Yeah. Um, while the other two um, tenders were received, was council paying the tender at that amount a year? Mm. Yeah. So it was per year, $10,000. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other questions, councillors? Go ahead, Councillor Burke. Uh, I'd like to move that Council 1 select 18 Proprietary Limited as a recommended tender for tender <coughs> 21030, Indian Caravan Park Management Agreement. Two, delegate authority of the Chief Executive Officer to enter into final negotiations with 18 Proprietary Limited and execute the lease three years with the option of an additional three year period in the if the terms are acceptable. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? All those in favour? 9 0. Has everyone read the late open? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll move <coughs> on to the L1 monthly financial report as at the 30th of April 2021. <coughs> Do we have a mover? Councillor Hancock. I move that the monthly financial report for the period ended 30 April 2021 be received and noted. Do we have 
A seconder. Councillor Guthrie. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. Uh, L2 Annual Review of Appointment of the Position of Deputy Mayor. We got some legal advice that's in there, councillors. Um, so we've got odd. I think I moved on this last time, or maybe I didn't. But I'm happy to move on option one. Uh, no, um, which one is it? Um, it was here. That's where you moved. Yeah, option last. one. I moved it last time. Did I? The bit that Kelly's got highlighted is what you moved. Oh, that. I think that's what you were trying to say. Yeah, that's right. That council note its annual review and no further action is required. <coughs> yeah. Uh, do we have a seconder? Councillor Guthrie, any opposition? Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Uh, I'd just like to let it, everyone know um, contrary to the rumours around um, town on social media that the whole of the council was supportive of me being Deputy Mayor again. There was no one against me. There seems to be a bit of misrepresentation in the community that um, a couple of people were against me, but there was a whole full support of me taking on the position last meeting. Retaining the position, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll speak to the motion. Um, uh, this, this is just a very simple thing. Uh, I don't believe there's anything to see here. Um, it actually puts it in perspective that um, we're very, you know, open and transparent. Um, I believe uh, I work very closely with the Deputy Mayor and uh, it's a fantastic um, beneficial relationship that we do the most for Council. So certainly, um, yeah, don't believe that. Um, I think we should just get on with it. Would anyone like to speak in opposition? Uh well, we go <coughs> opposition and then uh, we go that way. Councillor O'Neill. I'm not speaking in opposition of Councillor McMullen's position uh, because um, uh, quite, quite rightly, as it was shared with the meeting uh, a fortnight ago, it was a unanimous vote of 9-0. Not last meeting, I might add, Councillor McMullen. We actually didn't vote on this last meeting. Um, I moved to lay it on the table um, so that we could get legal advice. But, but you are right um, that... Um, <coughs> In, in terms of the vote that was taken 12 months ago, it was 9-0 and it's sad that the rumour mill uh, in our community is running rife with um, misinformation because that certainly isn't the case. My um, opposition to this is, is simply that, um, as was articulated um, when we discussed this a fortnight ago by Councillor Hancock, this appears to be a performance review. Uh, and, and I am just not supportive of this coming back to the table on an annual basis. Um, I, I think it, it, uh, it goes against uh, the spirit of the, the Act. The advice in it uh, illustrates that that's come back to us, that um, the appointment of Mayor, uh, of Deputy Mayor, is for a four-year period. Uh, and yes, there are um, provisions in the Act that can trigger changes, but not on a defined time. Uh, and for it to come back on an annual basis now, the community will be waiting every 12 months to see if Councillor McMullen remains the Deputy Mayor. And I'm sorry, I voted in favour of Councillor McMullen um, uh, uh, becoming our Deputy Mayor because he topped the poll. And, he, and, and that hasn't changed, uh, unless someone can tell me there was an election that I wasn't part of. And, and I think it is upon us uh, to uh, put this to bed, uh, that there isn't going to be an annual review. Um, quite frankly, um, the Mayor's role isn't reviewed annually. And nor should it be. The, the public have a right to um, uh, review the performance of the Mayor and all of us councillors every four years. The responsibility of determining who acts in the absence of the Mayor as deputy is the nine of us. We've determined that 12 months ago. We determined that nine votes to zero that Jeff McMullen would be the deputy mayor of this council through until 2024. And for it to be reviewed annually implies nothing more 
then this is a performance review. So I object to the motion today on the basis that I've made my determination that Councillor Jeff McMullen will be the Deputy Mayor through until 2024. Uh, and uh, I don't believe we should be at, at uh, any time uh, on an annual basis assessing Councillor McMullen's performance as Deputy Mayor and determining whether he should continue or not. We've made our decision. The responsibility was put uh, uh, in our hands because the nine of us were elected to this chamber. Uh, and uh, I uh, fully support Jeff maintaining that position uh, until he decides, he decides to uh, create a vacancy uh, or we um, cease to be councillors at the end of 2024. So uh, by no means is my objection to this a personal view, Council McMullen, it's not. I support you in the role. Uh, but I will be voting against this on the basis that this is against uh, the spirit and clearly the commentary that has been uh, shared with us um, from the, the development of the Local Government Act. Wish to speak uh, for um, Councillor Taylor? Please go oh, ahead. Um, Councillor O'Neill has basically said that all I was going to. But are we allowed to change it so that it doesn't come up annually? Is that uh, is that something we can do? Because we're not as as <coughs> Councillor O'Neill said. You know, it's not a it's not supposed to be a performance review. We haven't done a performance review, so um, I just wonder why it's got to be ha annually. Um, can you change your motion? Well, Amend you your motion. You would have to do a rescission and bring a rescission motion forward to council. That would be a separate thing. So this motion uh, is in place, um, but that would be a separate thing if you wanted to do it. So you couldn't do it today is what I'm saying. You'd have to be a process. Yeah. But we could do it. Yeah, if council wanted to, there's no doubt. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, we better check that, but we'll find out. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak um, against or for the motion? Councillor Hancock. Um, I would like to just ask a question through you, Mr Mayor. To Please start go with. ahead. <clears throat> to the Madam CEO. Just so I can get my head around this, um, if we wanted to amend the motion um, to take away the annual review, does that mean, can we put forward an amended um, motion or do we have to rescind the first motion then that makes the chair vacation then and then put it forward again, or can we just amend today? Mr Mayor, can I, um, I, I'm going to move a procedural motion this lays on the table until the next ordinary meeting of council to receive <coughs> that legal advice, because uh, I don't think anyone can determine that here today. Yeah, what, what I'm thinking, Councillor Hancock, is just the motion that the Mayor's moved now also implies an annual review. so. I, I think Councillor O'Neill's, like I think what the Mayor is saying is right, but there's, we'll probably need to get advice on the two motions now because this one, so um, Cal, can you just go above? Because with the Mayor's motion now that the Council note its annual review, which sort of implies that there is a annual, annual, annual review going forward as well. Mm -hmm. So we probably will need to get advice on both. So Mayor, I've put that um, procedural motion. Well, yes, and um, does anyone want to speak against that procedural motion? I'll, I'll speak against it, I don't Mayor, agree I with don't it. I don't think you can. Uh, procedural motions are to be put. There, there is no debate on a procedural motion. Okay, all those in favour? All those against? Councillor Burkett, which way are you voting? To lay, I was happy to lay it on the table. Right, okay. So, um, so well, let's do that again. All those in favour? All those against? The motion is lost. No, Mr. Uh, then, well, sorry, then I will um, use my casting vote in the, um, in the negative, so it's 5-4. Okay, so we're moving on with the motion that... Um, um, so what have I got on that, Kel? Yeah, that council, um, um, I think actually we had in the first thing, is there even different wording again, CEO? Or is it just to be noted? Did we have, I think I had the last report here. It's on page 12. No, but it, has this report changed from last time? 
I think it might even have been short. Um, I can double check this one. The same rec What's officer's this? recommendations on page <coughs> nine than was last time. No, but we had the two different options. Page nine. Page <coughs> 12. Yeah, 12. Different. So, so that's what the minute said last time, um, that council made its annual review and no further action is required, no vote taken. So that's what you yeah. moved. And that's the same. Council made its annual review and no further action is required. Right. Well, I'm happy to go with go with that. Uh, we've got a seconder for that, Councillor Guthrie. Mr Mayor, uh, you were up to, if anyone wanted to speak against motion. Oh, were we? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, anyway, we're going with this motion. Councillor Hanker, would you like to speak? Yeah, I do. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to say that I wholeheartedly support Councillor McMullen being the Deputy Mayor. Um, voted that way when we first had our meeting. And, um, and as a new councillor, I'll admit, I probably didn't quite realise um, the legislation and that um, didn't quite understand when it said about the reviewed annually. Um, now I have been informed and um, and I can read it for myself and I actually don't believe that it should be reviewed annually. Um, I think it is for the whole term and um, and when you say reviewed annually, I can think nothing more than a performance review, which I absolutely disagree with. And, and I actually think because we're doing an annual review, we're actually stirring up the community every year instead of putting it to bed for the whole term of council. Like, let's put it to bed. The deputy mayor has been chosen, and it should be Councillor McMullen, and and put it to bed for the, the term. Let's not keep stirring the community up every year with an annual review that looks like a performance review, where the community is waiting to see whether council is going to um, not have uh, Councillor McMullen as the deputy mayor and put someone else in. And to actually have the um, reviewed annually makes me wonder, as a council, if there is in fact a reason that that may happen into the future. And that really, really concerns me. So on that motion, I will not be, on that notice, I will not be supporting this today. I wholeheartedly believe Councillor McMullen should be the Deputy Mayor for the term of council. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak for the motion? <coughs> or against the motion? Councillor Taylor. I too would just like to say that I can't, I can't support it on the words annual review. I don't believe it should be an annual review either. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? I'll sum up. Well, if we're talking about stirring the community up, I believe all of this has been stirring the community up. This was a simple note, move on, and it has changed into something else. So I think if we don't want to stir the community up, then we just get on with it and make a decision. Um, I do think that this is a way that, um, I, I think people fail to realise in the legislation there is a way that the Deputy Mayor can be changed and I would like to see that that, that would never be a situation where that would happen um, and I believe that uh, this part of the motion is just common sense that there's nothing to see here, we move on. Uh, which is what I expect. And as I said, I work very closely with the Deputy Mayor. I've certainly been against getting more legal advice and, and taking more time and more indecision. I believe that this is about making a decision and moving on. We have far more pressing things. Um, I, everyone has said they're in support of the Deputy Mayor, so I don't see what uh, the issue is and I think we should get on with it. So on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Councillor Burke didn't know what we were Sorry, voting I on. Just, I 
Okay, so Councillor Burkett, we're going for um, the Council Notice Annual Review and no further action is required. Okay, so that's the status quo. Okay, so we'll go to the vote again. All those in favour? All those against? 6-3 if I can call for a division. <laughs> Item L3, NLIS Compliance Scanning and Data Collection Services, Roma Sayards. Do we have any questions, councillors? Well, I'd like to move that number one, council select Outcross PTY LTD as the recommended tenderer for tender 21032 NLIS Compliance Scanning and Data Collection Service. Authorise the Chief Executive Officer enter into final negotiations with Outcross uh, PTY LTD. Um, yeah, enter into final negotiations with the Outcross PTY LTD and execute the service agreement if the final terms are acceptable. Three, the arrangement remain current until the end of 30 April 2023 with no option for extension. No option to be extended. No option to extend. With no option to extend. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Edwards. Any opposition? Sure. Yeah, I've read all that. That's the uh, valuation report. Uh, yeah. No, it's good. Okay, we have a second to Councillor Edwards. Any opposition? Just, um, no opposition, Mr. Mayor. Um, will you speak to it? To so, I'm just wondering what the reasons <coughs> behind it. So. Uh, yeah, and I'll I'll give reasons at the the end um, about it. Um, so, um, no opposition, or we're not sure. So um, we'll keep going with the debate. Uh, I'm supporting um, this uh, change. I, I believe that um, it uh, could be very beneficial for um, council sale yards. And I think it is, um, you know, we have to make heavy decisions. That's no disrespect for the company that's doing it now. But it is uh, something that I believe it could be beneficial in the future for um, <coughs> Roma sale yards. Okay, um, Councillor Taylor. Could we hear from Manager Paul to see sure. um, what his thoughts are? What was your question, well, Councillor he, Taylor? Well, he's recommended AAM. I'm just wondering um, if it gets changed, how is that going to affect you and the job? <coughs> um, through you, Mr Mayor, um, the recommendation was based on the evaluation process. Um, not based on anything else by the information provided by the parties. Um, what it means for me moving forward, I have no idea. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't say either way. Is it going to be better or not? I, I don't know. Okay. I really don't. And to be fair, the manager's never worked with Outcross, have you? So you wouldn't have any history with them? No, that is correct. Councillor Hancock. I just have a question. Please, go um, ahead. Through you, Mr Mayor, which, Manager Paul, you may or may not be able to answer, and, and that is okay. Um, does AAM employ local people to do the scanning? So through you, Mr Mayor, now they there used to be two out-of-town staff members and the rest were all local. Um, now there's only one out-of-town and they're, they're pretty much 99% local mm -hmm. employees. So they're local residents in Roma. Um, yeah. So do you know um, whether Outcross would employ, was that part of the evaluation, whether they'd employ local people? Um, through you, Mr Mayor. So in their submission, they were asked to provide details on key staff, supervisory staff. When you looked at their submission, all of their supervisory staff, directors, managers, all that are actually out of town. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, now, does anyone wish to speak against the motion? <coughs> does anyone wish to speak for the motion? That's uh, probably a couple of questions more than anything. Please go ahead. Um, page 17 on open, open things. Um, out across the private limit, um, provided a ship timetable indicated they do not have full understanding of Roman Sailyard's operations based on tender specifications and public availability information. I find that hard to swallow that when they're working there every night and the cattle are coming in with the, they've received the cattle. And um, I think we just said that the outcross managers know how to tell them. Well, same with, with um, AAM, he's their main supervisor lives in Toomba, come down every Tuesday, I think. But, both Outcross and AAM do share some of the work with the, if you know what I mean, one bloke on us works for AAM and then he swaps over and he goes to Outcross, so he lives here at the moment and often goes to Black Hill. Yeah, right. -o. Any other? Um, just through you, Mr Mayor, yeah. the reason that remark was put in there about their methodology and their timeframes so in, in their timetable and shift timetable, they've put that NVD entry will be conducted between 4 and 7 p.m. Curfew doesn't finish till 8 p.m. So there's no way they can complete that service in the time frame that they've suggested. The cattle are still arriving for an hour after that or an hour and a half depending on the sale. So that's why that remark was put in there. Um, AAM operations have actually, the overall supervisor or operations manager no longer comes from Toowoomba or thereabouts. They have appointed a local operations manager for that site. He is a local person. I was referring to another name that was in there. Oh, yeah, we've got to be careful. No, they're in the open. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, that one's not. That's why I won't mention it. No. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, manager Paul, so... With that timetable, can whoever goes in, do we can we enforce that that they go to that timetable to eight o'clock, or why well, would they not? Well, through you, Mr. Mayor, when we put the submission out, all we requested for them that it must be done by a certain time. So MVD entry was by five a.m. Tuesday morning. So they came up with their own shift and timetables. They just provided what how they're going to provide those services. Everything pretty much had to be done by 5am. So MVD entry, first round scanning, retagging of cattle, ready for the sale to start. Agents printouts in their pigeonholes by 5am. How they do that, we left that up to them to manage their staff them. and timetables. They still could meet that criteria by 5am, as long as everything's in place by 5am. That is correct, but they've provided a pricing on them to do the MVD entry from 4 till 7. Is that going to implicate... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it does sound odd, yeah. Council McMullen. Mr Mayor, I, I believe, I understand what the manager's saying, I agree that it's probably put in at 7 p.m. but when they're receiving, they're the ones receiving the cattle off the trucks until 8 p.m., I think it's probably an oversight where, because you, you know you're picking, you're delivering the, taking delivery of the cattle off the truck, surely you're not going to say, well, yeah, we're not going to um, um, scan them in, or whatever. And yeah, and sometimes people doing tenders can be different people than are working on the ground. So uh, now, uh, we have anyone that wanted to speak against the motion? Councillor Taylor? No, I just have a question. Have a question? Through Please you, go ahead. Um, Manager Paul. So, what's, if they don't do by 5 a.m., what, what sort of action are we allowed to take from that? So through you, Mr Mayor, I would assume that there'd be circumstances where we'd <coughs> ask why. Is there something that's happened? Like, is it a system failure? Has something stopped them from doing it through the night? And from there, if it's just a blatant that they haven't provided it by that time with no reasonable reason, I would imagine they would receive a letter from Council. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Councillor Ladbrook. Is there a penalty? Sorry, uh, Councillor Taylor, are you not finished? I just, so is there a penalty to them if they don't deliver what they, you know, like we have the rule, everything has to be done by 5am. So if they don't get to the table by 5am, is there any consequences that we enforce, apart so from a letter? Through you, Mr Mayor, under their performance criteria, they are held accountable. So if they don't meet those time frames, they're in breach of the contract. Yeah, they're in breach of contract, yeah. 
Okay, now Councillor Labrum. <coughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we don't take previous performance into account when we're evaluating it. We evaluate it on the documents that are received, the information provided. Um, I can say um, they have never ever been breached for their services in the time I have been there. Okay, any other questions? We'll keep going with the debate. Uh, does anyone want to speak against the motion or for the motion? Okay, uh, no one else wish to speak. We'll, we'll go, oh, well I'll sum up. As I said, I believe that uh, no disrespect to who's doing it now, um, but I do believe that um, this could be beneficial for Roma Sayards. So if no one else wishes to speak, we're gonna to go to the vote. All those in favour, all those against, 6-3 if I can call for a division. Uh, statement of reason. Well, I'll start with increased. I will actually I'll probably say that um, um, very close tender with. Decision being opportunities to increase <coughs> Roma Sar Yards. Okay, does anyone else want to add anything? Where was the first tender with decision being opportunities to increase? To increase what? Um, it should be increasing the opportunities rather than opportunities to increase. Right, I'm happy to change that. Throughput, or maybe I don't know what you'd call it. Mate, could we maybe expand on what what you actually mean yeah. by that? Get the things rolling quicker. I don't know how you. Yeah. So uh, through long term history. Yeah, we've got to be careful. Yeah, I don't know. Long term history of scanning. Does anybody else want to wish to put anything in there? No, no. That's my my bit. Yeah, no. so what, whatever <coughs> anyone else wants. Bits would be yeah. up there, Mr. Mayor, do they? Yeah, no, I think, well, if you're going to expand on it, I'm happy to have that in there. Anybody else like to add anything? Right, Oak, we'll keep going. Where are we at? Good morning tea there yet? Do we know? Thank you. 
Well, it looks like we're on to late. late. Uh, we're on to closed, I should say. Confidential. Anyone wish to go into closed? <coughs> I'll move that in accordance with provisions of section 254J3 of the Local Government Regulation <coughs> 2012, a local government may resolve to close a meeting to the public to discuss confidential items that its councillors or members consider it necessary to close the meeting. I'll second that. Okay, we haven't finished the resolution. Yeah, you got to get Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, the, um, yeah, Councillor McMullen did that bit there. Yeah. Uh, in accordance with Section 254J5 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, the following table provides the matters to be discussed, an overview of what is to be discussed while the meeting is closed. And I'm still happy to second. Because it's a table. That's what I'm saying. We just review what is on the screen, though, just to make sure you're happy with all of those. Scroll down, Kel. Should that table also include the, the budget <coughs> and stuff? Yes. So that'll be LC5. Um, update on budget matters from special meeting. Through the mayor, um, CEO, is there an LC two three four as well coming? Is there? LC one. Just wonder if it should be LC two. Can you refresh my memory? Is there's not a two, three, four, five in late? Is there? Yeah, so it'll be LC two then. We've got the late here now. Yeah. 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 Late from late. Yeah. So we're only adding one, one item, yeah. which was the update from <coughs> the special. Must be. So it's the second or I'm happy if the mover's happy with that addition of LC. Are we adding things to it, but LC2 it'll be to um, help. 
So we've got all the numbers up there because I think we need to have them all up there. So what is it? LC2 to 5, is it? No, just uh, LC2 now. It, sorry, got the 5. Right. Yeah, there was no... Um, There's only LC1 now. It's LC2. LC2, yeah. Right. So that's all there. Yeah, I'm happy. Seconder. Uh, mover, Councillor O'Neill. No, mover was Councillor McMullen. I seconded. No, no, I seconded. Okay. No, I moved it, sorry. <laughs> we all mixed up. Yeah, <laughs> I've written it down right. I just want to yeah, you moved it yeah, and I seconded. Second. Got that. Kel's got it right. <laughs> sorry. As, as always. Um, okay, any opposition? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 9-0. L4, has everyone read that? Where are we? L4. Community feedback, have you say, flights in the Maranao? Has everyone seen that? So I'd like to move the council provide a copy of feedback received from community consultation about flights in the Maranao. Uh, to the Department of Transport and Main <coughs> Roads, DTMR. That's any personal information, which I'm sure that would be anyway, but... Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Edwards. Um, <coughs> Any opposition? Um, I'll speak to this. This is an opportunity as part of um, meetings I had in Brisbane that uh, DTMR were very interested in getting this information because uh, we had pretty comprehensive feedback. <coughs> so it's just really giving them a copy from they are the ones that operate the contract um, or uh, not operate the contract, but actually it's their contract. So. Okay, so anyone else wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 8 0. Okay, so moving on with the confidential agenda. C1, claim for damages. I'd like to move that. Uh, Where are we, C1? Mm -hmm. Might just want to lay that one on the table just for a moment there, just for Penny puts that wording right. together. Okay. So um, I'd like to move that we lay this on the table till later in the meeting. All those in favour? 8 0. C2, request to purchase portion of council land, lot 2 on RP64008. I'd like to move that we lay this on the table for further discussions about the opportunity to use any of the land without purchase and consult with other community groups on uh, affected. <coughs> so I need to put in there that the person using the land would be the <coughs> applicant. using the land and not purchasing purchasing the land. And then Matt, could you just say something further discussion with the applicant about alternative usage of this land? Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I've, I've just sort of given the direction we're not looking at Selling the land or, or yeah. Mm. 
So obviously the feedback would come back, we'd talk to the affected community groups, the person Ooh. with the application to get that information back if it was on a basis of alternative use of the land, is there any, um, any interest in that without sale or purchase? Job land discussions between the applicant and other community groups <coughs> affected. Uh, Director Rob, is, is does that give you enough direction? Oh, yeah, right. I think so, Mr. Mayor. So it's just a discussion with all the affected parties. Um, intention is not to sell it, but is there something that council can do other than sale uh, and talk to the affected parties and bring a report back to council? Right, do we have a <coughs> seconder for that? No, oh, well, if it's a lay on the table, we probably don't need to. Okay, so it's laying on the table. Mm. Okay, all those in favour? 8 0. Mm -hmm. C3, write off amounts. Oh, we haven't got that. Have we got that information yeah, right. yet? Yep, it's in the actual one. Oh. So it just was in relation to the FDA. Mm -hmm. mm. So everyone's got that? So you're comfortable you know about that now? Yeah. Airport landing fees. C3, write off amounts in accounts receivable. Do we have a mover? Councillor McMullen. Mr. Mayor, I'll move that. Council approved the write-off of sundry debtor account debts to the value of $184.88 owing to the current status of being irreco irrecoverable to pursue further recovery action. And we have a second to Council Ladbrook. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Zero. I went to councillors there. Yeah. Did they cover it or not? Yeah. Go back to that. Oh yeah. go back to it or what time to consider it? Few on the sheet. Yeah. Right. Can you blow it? Okay. Yeah. We do C one. Yeah. C1, claim for damages. C1? C1, I don't know. Just got the email. Mm -hmm. I'd like to move the council reimburse the claimant the amount of $2,000 being for out of pocket expenses occurred on the following conditions. That one, council and the claimant acknowledge the council are not legally liable for the incident. Two, the claimant agrees to accept the amount of $2,000 as full and final settlement of all claims arising from the alleged incident on 16th of March 2021. And three, uh, write to the claimant advising them of the risk of overland flow um, that can happen at any time in the future. Mm -hmm. And options for avoiding this. Okay, do we have a seconder for that motion? Just a tiny, uh, we, I'm just, I 
I'm a bit concerned about um, are we saying that there is so potential for oh no there is potential for overland flow In but it's not caught it's not due to anything to do with council it's not council. Yeah, I can put in there any land landowner or any resident has the opportunity for overland flow. Mm. Is that the correct terminology? I just, I'm worried I about. So. It is, Mr. Mayor. It's probably we do have some, some fact sheets on overland flow. We we do send out to residents uh, when they are experiencing it. Um, generally, when it's overland flow, it is between uh, it's for the class of civil matter um, and not doesn't involve local government. We don't normally get involved in that one. Um, well, what do you call it when um, it goes through, you know, like either off the street or it could come from another neighbouring place? It's just, overland flow is a description of it, Mr. Stormwater well, overland flow. Um, and the reason I'm putting that in, councillors, is to to make them aware of it so they can take steps to alleviate it next time. We obviously understand there was extenuating circumstances, but there is still a bigger picture that you may get it again, and obviously. <coughs> would not like to see them going through this again. Yeah, but we probably, yeah, I'd probably just through this, we just need to probably take that so it doesn't look like that the problem that was potentially caused by council can happen again. It just needs to be mm -hmm. from natural mm. rainfall or... Mm. Yeah, be because it actually looks like, like... I just wonder if we're setting ourselves up for... We need to say that it's from a, a, a downpour or a rain event. So due to a natural yeah. event or a rain event or... Um, Otherwise it looks like we're going to cause it, a problem. It also looks like we're paying out because of that as well. Um, that well, well, I just didn't up. want to go on. Well, that, the rest of it is the wording from, from the staff, so... That, that's right, but that number three m might make th people think that that's what's happened. Uh, well, three could be right to the west part of advising them that um, landowners in general. Well, could we just include uh, include the include the flyer? But I, I think the big thing is it could happen next time, and we we could be back in this situation. So I think there needs to be some clarification that but, it can happen. So. But we're not in this situation because of that, Mr Mayor. Well, there could be a mix of both. That is actually why that situation happened. So it could be both, and that's what I'm concerned about. We can't make a decision on that um, because we don't know. Mm. No. So no, we're we're just making the, le uh, the resident aware of that to be prepare for it. That's where could the fact sheet comes in. So just advise, you know, the fact sheet. Okay. So just to say that... You know, people must generally do this and do that to avoid this occurring again, mm. generally. Yeah, like one of the things is people will... Mm. Should I say Council acknowledge that? Council McMillan? So may I'm just going to ask, Kel, I think the word any could come out at landholders in general. Is that... Right there, any? That landholders, not any landholders. Does that sound better? Yeah. Landholders incur a lower risk of overland flow due to. This can happen. Yeah. This can happen at any time in the future. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Right. Yeah, that can happen. Mm. I don't know, I'm not sure, Tracy. But and should yeah. consider options for avoiding this. Should we say council acknowledge like that? But yeah, you've got to try to separate the the fault of ours to the future to, to, to the normal. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> so why are we writing to just this, this particular claim? Why can't we put something in the bottle tree bulletin, Mr. Mayor? Have a look at the email I just sent you. That's the fact sheet that we actually have prepared <coughs> and distributed. So yeah. um, we might want to have a look at that. I think like it's a pretty good now. explanation of what we do. So depersonalises it then. Yeah, I think just send them that. Yeah. Send them that. Yeah. 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 Ye
gives you no responsibility. Mm. Or to the claim and uh, including the stormwater on your property fact sheet. Include stormwater. Stormwater fact sheet. Yep. That might be the game. That is better. Mr. Mayor, just that is better. say right to the claimant, including the stormwater on your property fact sheet to help with future rain events. And advising responsibilities, <coughs> isn't it? Yeah. Preventative, preventative, preventative action yeah, for... Yeah, because that separates, yeah. otherwise it yeah. just be grey. Yeah. It is a fairly useful document, <coughs> is it, Danielle and her team? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have that in there, but I do think that, yeah, we've got to be careful... Um, yeah, we don't want to be in this situation in the future. No, but that's why I think if they read this, that covers it, and it's not like it separates it from that incident. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I suppose would you be happy with? I mean, that third point there. I mean, obviously we do write. If this motion is to get up, we do write back to the claimant, advising of, of step one and two, um, to cover off on step three. The letter might just say, look, you know, outlining that, and please find attached um, the actual the storm one. Um, fact sheet on it so, so, the, so it does cover, tick off on part three um, we'll just include it in the letter we draw attention to it say look here's a, here's a copy of that so provide the claimant with council stormwater fact sheet isn't yeah it? well the, even the um the uh the way it's worded i'm happy with the way it's worded councillors it just means when i write well, when my team write the letter um to tick off on that point three i would say in the letter um and please find attached <coughs> the actual fact sheet uh, and that would one, tick off one, yeah one, one legwork mm. And certainly if they've got any further questions to contact us as well. And if the landowner thinks that you <coughs> shouldn't get any water, like when the storm water's working, it, it may still get water in the property mm -hmm. and that, in a big event. So like any driveway will just straight in. Mm -hmm. So we just... Yeah. I suppose all point three does is it just makes sure in the letter I reference that, in, in the letter back to them I do reference the, um, the fact sheet and include it with the letter. Yeah. Um, I, I sent you a copy of that one. Um. <laughs> could, could you put there after the stormwater fact sheet to um, uh, so to avoid potentially avoiding this happening again? Or no, because then uh, that brings it back. Oh, that brings it back together. to the. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah, not, just that's just not what's there. Just what's good there. Enough, I reckon. Leave it like that. One. Because if you just keep going, yeah, it just gets too complicated. Just there. keep it's it really good. simple yeah. and yeah. straight just to the point. And that way it Otherwise, it just goes on and on and on. Because it is too many. Okay. As Mr. Mayor is a, and Council um, provide advice to them on how to manage overland flow. Because it is a risk in our communities, so mm. people understand that. And, and by the look, and there's a few residents like that at Mitchell where the, the road's been built up over the years, so the allotments are a lot lower than the stormwater, and that's what happened. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to remove three and put that in, in the new one. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have a seconder for that motion? Council Edwards, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 8 0. Okay. Moving on. On this? Yes, on this well, one. Why don't we just can... lay this one? I move we lay LC1 on the table till later in the meeting. All those in favour? 8 0. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. No, no, no.
No, we've got... Shh, two o'clock. <coughs> two o'clock bed. Um, we've, we've got... Do we, uh, do we go out of clothes? Mm. And deal with... I go into clothes, sorry, to, to deal with it. Kent? Yep. Do you have to move all that over again? Or we've already done it once, haven't we? We have to. But we still have to go. Mm. Just to say that first paragraph, then? Mm. Mr. Mayor, I'll move we go into close. Oh, no. okay. Everyone's happy, right? In accordance with the provisions of section 254J3 <coughs> of the Local Government Regulation 2012, the Local Government may resolve to close a meeting to the public to discuss confidential items that its councillors or members consider it necessary to close the meeting. Is there anything on there we need to read? We don't have LC2. We will have. Yeah, but that's, we're going to do that after the meeting. Yeah, so we're, we're just going to do now for LC1. Oh, I thought that was the idea, get it dealt with and then yeah, and we finish the meeting. Yeah. So do we have a seconder for that? For Did you finish, finish saying yeah, that? Yeah, let's move yep. it. Well, I think I've moved it. Right. We have a seconder? Yeah. Councillor Guthrie, all those in favour? 8 zero. LC1, expressions of interest 21022, purchase of or lease of industrial land, Mitchell, Queensland. I'd like to move that council conclude the expressions of interest process. And uh, do I need any other wording, CEO, or just that? That's it. Uh, do we have a seconder? Yes. Councillor Ladbrook. Um, any opposition? Yes. Sure. EOI and, and not proceed at the moment. At, at this time. At this time. Yeah. Yeah, at this time. Not to proceed at this time. Okay, is the second happy with that? Yes, I am. Right, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Uh, that's 6 2 if I can call for a division. Okay, lunch time. Uh, we'll break for lunch. Having to close. Mr. Mayor, I'll move. In accordance with the provisions of Section 254J3 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, a local government may resolve to close a meeting to the public to discuss confidential items that its councillors or members consider it necessary to close the meeting. Have we added that one into the schedule, the new one? Um, oh, okay. And, and NFL, can you just go back to the schedule so that we can show what LC2 is? Yes, it's in there, so. Council to receive an update on budget matters from the special meeting on 19th of May 2021, scheduled to commence at 12:10 p.m. We have a seconder. Uh, Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Anyone wish to speak? We're going to vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. LC2, update on budget matters for special meeting 19th of May 2021. Do we have a mover? Councillor O'Neill. I'll move that Council receive and note the update and the model for operating revenue and expenditure, depreciation, renewal and other capital works. Do we have a seconder? Uh, <coughs> Councillor Burkett. Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 
Nine zero. Uh, councillors, I'd like to um, I'd like to move that we put on the agenda the Wallambilla rubbish dump uh, issues, and um, so I'd like to move that that's on the agenda. Is there a seconder for that motion? Councillor Guthrie, any opposition? Uh, anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. No, there's no paper. I just want to um, bring up the issue of, um, I believe, and I'm happy to allow um, debate, that we need a higher level of service at the rubbish dump, as feedback that has been come from community group. Um, and I think that this has been happening for quite a while. Um, does anyone else want to put any discussion in? Councillor Guthrie. Can I just mention that um, Councillor Hancock and I attended the Wallambilla Town Improvement Group meeting last week and there were some very, very strong discussions taking place. Um, and whether or not that's an indication of the whole of Wallambilla, but there was some pretty strong um, conversation and, and people with some very strong points of view. So I think that it's one that does need to be looked at and we just need to reassess where we're at and make sure that we're progressing something that's going to meet their needs. Yeah, so I would like to move that uh, Council increase the uh, pushing up of the Wallambilla dump um, to double the amount of days per week as it is now. Um, I'm happy to take any advice if any days you believe are better than other days, councillors. How many days how many, is there now? Yeah, so many? it's pushed up two, I believe, at the moment. Is that it's correct? In the back home there and then um, with the drop, the drop goes down from Roman and compacts it, though, so it's three. So. Three. Yeah, so then I would be saying that um, obviously um, do six days because this has been festering at different times and I think we need a higher level of service. I think, um, so as your councillor's there, like, so I think when we when you get, can get to three days, I don't I think there's an issue there. I think the issue is where you have a breakdown or the plant's being used somewhere else and it's not happening three times a week. I think that's where you get your problems there. So I don't think they're doing it all the time like they're supposed to. Uh, because if there were, you, you wouldn't be having a problem. I think the problem is because it's not being done as regularly as it should be, Mr. Mayor. So, um, so maybe it's not, but not doubling, like to six times it's a week. But it, days, it's I just don't think we're doing it like we should be. I think we we're not pushing up as regularly as it's supposed to be. It should be done that many times, Mr. Mayor. But my I suspect it's not being done as regularly as it should be. Council McMullen, did yeah. you? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Like some time back, we resolved to use a contractor contractor started doing it and then council towns and surrounds or local people decided to do it so yeah the contractor go to do it and they'd already done it when the contractor didn't go then they didn't go so it was just I don't know what was going on but I think and another thing I've said I don't know how many times in five years we are not putting enough dirt on top of them I don't care what anyone says when you go walk, drive away and there's still rubbish sticking up through the dirt and it's all of most of our tips the birds and crows and everything, they start plucking it out. And even some cases, the wind's strong enough to pull it out. But that's another, well, it's not another story, but it is. And the Wallenbiller dump, we all know, it was two years ago, I think you, we met there, Probably Director yeah, Rod. It may not be that long ago. You, okay. Michael, myself, yeah. Kay, I can't think of it. And, the, you know, the gentleman from down there. And there's no, uh, yeah, old Jimmy Klein. And that, and the Wallenbiller dump has run out of room, full stop. Yeah. I know there's plans in place to do um, transfer stations and that, but I think they can't come quick enough. Uh, the transfer station. Yeah. I, I, th I, like, I suspect that is that when the um, the plant is being used, they're using the backhoe for something else. It's out of town. It's not getting pushed up mm. as regular as it's supposed. That's the problem. But a lot of those ones there too. If it's a particularly bad day and it hasn't been done, they just leave a letter snow as well. I was saying to the council before. I've got I've got a camera there. I get an updated flood every five minutes of the tip. And I was saying, like we said before, I've, I've actually gone back every day for the last eight days and it's been pushed up, not a drama at all. So I suspect it possibly maybe in the week before. So I'm just left a message there for the town surround crew there to find out what happened the week before. But when you look at the photos for the last seven days, it's been pushed up. But it's um, but if there's a day that hasn't been done, I'm only a phone call away there too. I can actually jump on, I can actually do it on the phone. I can do it from home. I can actually check the camera and say, yeah, that hasn't been pushed up for, for a week or five days. Or no, there's... So. So a council worker does that or a contractor, did you say? Council worker, but I think what the Mayor is saying, we just go back, to, there is a resolution there to go back with the contractor. Um, 
and get the contractor to do it. Um, there were some issues there where they'd been tied up as well. Um, but I think, yeah, if, if they know they've regularly got, you know, two to three days worth of work there, I think they'll they'll do the job. So I think that's that's the solution. Really. Councillor McMullen. Another thing, this is only my thoughts. I'm, I'm of the impression, I might be wrong, that traditionally you push it up in the morning. Yeah. I, I got, I'm of the opinion that I know the staff want to knock off at four or then, but if you do it at 2.30, 3 o'clock, you know, if you do it in the morning and then, not every day you get a heap there, but it's there and then it's there all night with the, the wind blowing and the birds blowing, um, not birds blowing, the birds are probably picking it at night, but the wind blowing. And I'm not that I'm not saying wind doesn't blow through the day, but I mean it's, yeah, I don't know, it's a hard one to... Yeah, it depends too, like um, you said, like Wallenbill is probably a little bit different because the contractor doesn't dump his rubbish there. Yeah. Um, but probably with Injun, Surratt and Mitchell where you've got your you know, contract picks up wheelie bins, you want to tie them to push up for yeah. when he actually drops his rubbish yeah. on the counter. All those ones you mentioned, Director Rob, they got pits. While I'm Bella, we're building a hole, we're building a mountain. We're not, we've got no pit. Well, Mitchell had the mountain. Yeah, well, they've got the pit now. Yeah. Oh, it makes a big difference pushing into a pit where you... Uh, Yule Bar's another one, I remember. Uh, there was an issue there with that one as well. A um, long time ago. I think a CR went in for it. So that that was another issue where it wasn't pushed up, and that was that was put in by a uh, put it uh, brought to our attention by a community, <coughs> community person who took photos of it. Um, so so maybe the Wallenbilla one is just another example of it. But yeah, so yeah. so Yulebar might be another example of that again. So the yeah. Yulebar one was quite a few months ago. There it was raised. Yeah, yeah. yeah. three years ago. Yeah. Um, Director Rob. I think I've had brought this up before. For little ones like um, Wallabilla, Mungalala and all those, mm. you know how they have those nettings over fruits? Like, yep. so it's, it's still not going to solve the issue of the pushing up, but it'll solve the issue of birds oh, and, yeah. and blowing away. Yeah. Because mm. the one in Mitchell, like, I'd hate to own the place next door to that. Like, it's just blowing away all the time. But it's a bit bigger. But those smaller ones, I think that'd be pretty cost effective and there'd be no rubbish going anywhere. It's held in that little area. There's a whole lot of it back, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Councillor Hancock, did you want to say something? Uh, no, I'm no, no, that's fine. No, but um, I will say I went to Yuba. What day we go to Yuba for the lunch, whatever day it was. Yeah. Anyway, for the and I went out and had a look, and the Yuba dump was pretty good. But it appeared by looking at the tracks on the ground, the drop must have been there the day before, or very close to that. Anyway, the yeah. one when Councillor um, uh, Edwards raised it there, that was that was probably about four months ago. I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when the drop actually had broken down. Yeah. So the drop had been out of action for a fortnight. So that was yeah. of course there, which yeah. speaks it's been back and you guys are keeping an eye on it there. So yeah, I think you looked at it and it was fine, you know, it was all yeah, it was yeah. already fixed up. But it was it was yeah. it was at the time there was it had a period there where that drop hadn't gone over and compacted it there, it had a breakdown. But yeah. um, so, so we, there, like, do we in light of what uh, Director Rob said that maybe it's just if it's been right for the last seven days, maybe it has been that not getting done the full three days because six days seems a bit excessive. If it's, if it's I right. think the contractor is the one that Councillor probably Mullen touched on before. I think the contractor is probably the answer there. We we went out to tender. We yeah we got uh, uh, costing there for they gave us a, a day rate to push up, um, and they were but a couple of times have been over there. The town surround guys obviously had a bit of time up to sleep. They've gone up and given a tidy up. They've turned up to a push up and so we we'll look you know and after a couple of times of that they said well obviously we're not needed, but. I think they are the solution there. We've got a dedicated person like, you know, like the contractor to go in there mm. three times a week pushing it and covering it. I think that's... Yeah. Uh, mm. And, and they, when they do it, they're doing a good job. It was just, they would say, I'll turn up a couple of times and, yeah. you know, I'm not needed because it's been done. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Guthrie. Mr. And Mr. then Councillor McMullen. Um, I think there's really valuable discussions taking place, but I think it would be really helpful if we actually able to go down and ask some of the people in Wallambilla because each of them had a very strong story to tell. Some were focusing on particular aspects of health and safety. There were others that were talking about um, there's a whole range of different issues. So I'm not sure whether we would go through a have you say or we'd actually go down and have a public, uh, like a community consultation because I think if you hear it from the actual people li living in the town, mm -hmm. we can make a lot of assumptions but we may not be quite on the money. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really great to be able to hear first hand from them. So what I'm putting forward is that we double it for a trial period. I'm happy to put in trial period and see what the community thinks because this has been going on for so long and I've heard it so many times on and off 
uh, even at race days, people are just so frustrated about the Wollongong dump. So I think, and we're going to a transfer station, so that's happening in the future. So what I'm putting forward is we <coughs> do this and then we trial it, get it back to council um, and see see what the Councilor community... Council Mr McDonald. Mayor, um, in light of what Director Rob said, no matter what amount of days we decide on, if we go to a contractor like you're suggesting, which I agree with, if the contractor <coughs> looks at it on an off day and he thinks it's bad, it's not hard to pick the phone up and you can look at the... You or somebody yeah, yeah. look at the so camera right. and say, "Oh, you, you yeah. d definitely need to do it today." Yeah. If it's an additional, yeah. you know, like right. whether we say three days, five days, or whatever. But if it needs doing, it's not hard for a council officer, somebody, to look at. Oh, it. No, they are right. It needs pushing up today. And, and that's easily done. That's exactly right. And it's um, we do it with our waste contractors when they do yeah. the pick up. If there's, they say, "Oh, look, there's been a football match over yeah. at the showgrounds yeah. this weekend. There's an extra ten bins. Because yeah, can you authorise that? Same that so and so's had a, a clean out. They've had a clearing sale or wherever else and they've cleaned out the shed and you know we need an extra push up it's only a phone call we authorize it and, and like so. i said while i looks the worst and it is probably the worst because it's above ground mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you bar and those places can look really bad mm -hmm. but they're not they're only this high but you got the Wollumbilla one it's well i don't know how high it is five four five meters high or whatever it is and it's pushing it up Yule bar is actually a hole, isn't it? But They're all they, holes bar Wall and Biller, yeah. But they put it all in front and then... You push it in and Wall and Biller, they're pushing it up because it's... Yeah. No, mm. good now. Councillor Hancock. Um, Mr Mayor, whilst I agree that, you know, for any um, <coughs> long-time solutions, we really should engage the Wall and Biller community, I actually think um, my take from the meeting the other night is they want an answer sooner rather than later. And so I just feel that if we go through the have you say and that sort mm. of stuff for this we're just pushing back time, whereas we could actually have this fixed today for that community as to the push-up. Um, and then, uh, you know, long-term, we can talk to them about a long-term solution. Um, the transfer stations have been mentioned and we know that that's going to happen. Um, so, But I'm just a bit concerned about um, six days a week. I was you know, wondering about five days a week. As well, needed. well, we or, could go or as needed. Um, with just the up to. I'd be happy to have in the motion up to six days a week, um, because and then it's obviously up to the staff and that what they do. Yeah, I think they'd probably yeah. if you're up to and say if required, because so I think up the problem is it's required. not being done three. It might be done one day a week, and, and that's yeah. the problem. If you, you know, if you oh, triple that one day, we'll let you three days, and it's right. But it's mm. it's um it's. Yeah, it's yeah, we're sitting, and that's that's probably things not happening there. But as you said, if you but if you're doing three days, and as you said, if it needs more, and the and the contractor says, oh no, it probably does need another two. I think if you got up to six, that'll be fine. Rather than not not locking yourself. Councilor McMahon, in light of yeah, you know, all concerns too, by using a contractor, they'll give you a oh well, I know it's an hourly rate or a minimum rate of mix amount. But if you're using council staff, particularly on a weekend, there's you know I don't know what it is. So much of time and a half, then double time and everything else that goes with it. Because we don't do it on a weekend. No, no, but I mean, if we decide it doesn't need pushing on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday, if they ring you up and, or not you, but ring somebody up and say, look at this on the camera, and it's because of the short distance they've got to store it in now, you know, to. to yeah, that's just my thoughts. So, um, so I'm, I'm happy to move the motion that uh, Council increase the pushing up of the Wallambilla dump from three days to up to six and days per week, there, if required. Um, and um, also just to <coughs> inform councillors too, sometimes they're talking about that they can't even get into the dump to do green waste and that. So, you know, sometimes you're trying to nail the issue, whereas this is actually a trial. But, but anyway, is there a seconder for this motion? Councillor Guthrie, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? I, I do think that we are responsible for the strategic direction of council and I do think the service is not up to scratch and it's no one's fault, but we really need to get on top of it. So I do think we should do this as a trial and then let's see how it goes. Um, it hasn't got as, as a trial up there, Mr Mayor. Um, if required, um, well, it could work. we can ask for it to come back to council. Um, that council as a trial increase yeah. pushing up the yeah yeah that would work and it and it uh, returned to council for any change. Are we putting a period, yeah, Mr. Mayor, period. like a trial? What's the period of your trial? Yeah. Just so staff know. Big pun. 
in reviewing this one, run it through the financial year, review it as part of your budget then, because yep. I'll need to include in the budget yep. for next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that till, till the next budget. <coughs> and then we can get some feedback from hmm. the community as what they... Um, yeah. There's a trial until the next budget increase pushing up of the Wallenbilla dump from three days per week up to six days per week if required. Uh, we have a second. A second is happy with that. Any opposition? We're going to go to the vote. Does anyone else wish to speak? We're going to the vote. All those in favour? Nine zero. Any further business, councillors? Okay. Well, we'll close the meeting at 4:26 p.m. Thank you for your attendance. <coughs>